Yes, hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. This is Claret's Daily News here on Turfcast. Now, I think it's fair to say it's been quite a busy weekend, hasn't it, for Claret's News? And I'm not just talking in terms of rumours as well, which is obviously the stuff that I normally discuss on this show because we don't normally have too much official stuff. But of course, this weekend there was two official announcements from the club and two very big ones, I think it's fair to say. And I don't know about you guys, but I know a few people on Twitter have said the same thing, but I feel like this as well. These last two announcements, even though I had certain things to say about the first one, but these last two announcements and the things that's been said over the weekend has left me feeling a lot more optimistic about the season coming up. I know I said that you know, I still think we'll go up um, under Parker, but some of the things that he's been saying in these interviews is is started to make me think like this guy knows what he's doing. And to be fair, obviously the proof's in the pudding. He's got two teams out of this division. But hey, I've already given my opinion on that on other videos as well. So I won't be doing too much on this. But yes, of course, Scott Parker is now officially the Burnley manager. It was announced late on Friday. Now, the last time I spoke to you guys on this show was, of course, Friday morning. I usually do the Friday shows later, but due to work, I couldn't. However... I did say to you that I had a feeling, it was no inside information, I, I, I was fully honest, I'm always honest about stuff like that, but I just had a feeling, it just felt like it was about to be announced on Friday that Scott Parker was the head coach. I just felt like with all the rumours coming out, the stuff that Fabrizio was saying, that um, Sasha was saying and, and stuff that I was hearing as well, I just felt like that day was the day. And obviously, in the end, it was, but it was 9.30pm. So I remember thinking at 9.30pm, like, it's obviously not going to be today now, then maybe it's going to be Saturday morning or, or, or Monday. Uh, but of course, yeah, it was it was 9.30pm. A few people suggested on Twitter that it was done at that time for the American audience. I, I don't think the club were thinking of the American audience personally. They may well be, I, I, I don't know. I just felt like that's probably when everything was done and dusted and they could finally release the article and all the videos personally that's probably probably more of what it was rather than just thinking about the american audience but um yeah anyway it's official scott parker is now the burnley head coach as they've announced i keep accidentally calling him manager not that there's that much difference obviously there is a little bit of a difference but ultimately it's the same kind of job, just with less control. But I do keep accidentally calling him manager. I've already been correcting on it a couple of times. But yes, Burnley confirm Scott Parker as head coach. And they did that late on Friday. So to be fair, even if I did the Friday show a little bit later, I wouldn't have done it as late as 9.30. So I'd have, I'd have still missed it. So <laughs> it, it was kind of irrelevant um, about me doing it in the morning. But on the club website, the club said, Burnley Football Club are delighted to announce that Scott Parker has been appointed as the club's new head coach. The 43-year-old arrives at Turf Moor with a proven managerial record after securing two promotions to the Premier League previously with Fulham and Bournemouth. He also enjoyed a stellar career as a player, including 15 seasons in the Premier League and representing his country, England, as a captain. After signing his contract, he becomes boss of Burnley, he admitted he couldn't get to wait. Uh, sorry, he couldn't wait to get started. He said, "I'm really pleased to be here. I've been speaking with Burnley for some time now, which has been a positive thing, as I've got a real feel for the club and people around the club now. Uh, to be around the training ground now, you start to get the feel again, and I can't wait to get on the training field and start work. For us to be successful this year is the most important thing. We have to win and build a team." The fans can be proud of this team can represent sorry, this team can represent every single one of them in that aspect, and that's the aim. Um yeah, sorry, key stage one reading there from me. But like I said, some of the stuff that Scott said in his interview, um, because the, the all, all they've done here is taken the quotes from the interview that the club did put on YouTube. So if you want to watch that, I fully recommend it. It's not that long. It's 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 it can easily be done with a with a morning coffee after you've watched this. I fully recommend it. He speaks very, very well. And maybe I've been roped in a little bit here because I have, I have been saying a lot of the time that I am underwhelmed by the Scott Parker appointment. And maybe I've been roped in by his media training a bit here. And I feel like I have been a little bit, but he spoke very well in that interview. He, he spoke about a lot of things that give me encouragement. He spoke about the fact that he knows Craig Bellamy very well. He played with him at West Ham. And obviously they both played in the Premier League for several years together. So he, he knows them. He mentioned, interestingly, he mentioned that he was speaking to Craig and Vincent when they first took over at Burnley Football Club because they were asking him his perspective on certain things and, and vice versa. So 
it's interesting that I do find it interesting and it gives me a lot more confidence that he might be you know well connected at this club and uh, and he's coming into the club not blind like which I felt like he would have done I felt like he'd have come into the club blind and he'd have had his certain style of play and he'd have had to change the entire aspect of our team to match his style of play but it looks to me like Bellamy is staying unless of course he gets the Wales job um, because he alluded to him quite a lot in that interview and him and Bellamy do have a working relationship already so that has left me feeling a little bit more positive about the season but yeah just to confirm as I'm sure 100% of you watching this video were already aware but Burnley Football Club have officially made Scott Parker their new head coach. Elsewhere, there is the return of the Iceman. Now, I know 100% of you, again, will already be aware of this, but what, show, what sort of news show would I be if I didn't mention this? Even though it happened two days ago, I can't not mention this. But yes, Johan Berg Goodmanson has returned to Burnley Football Club and everybody is absolutely buzzing with it. He returns on a one-year deal, the club said on their website, He's back and he's very happy. That's exactly what they said. That was their headline. And I'll be honest with you, I'm absolutely buzzing with this. He may be getting older. He may be, you know, not a young player anymore that can probably play Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, which is a demand in the championship. But he is invaluable in terms of experience and he is still very, very capable in them games that he plays. He did quite well in the Premier League last season was very good in the championship the season before. And I, for one, I'm absolutely buzzing that he's back. I was shocked to see some people say, that very few people, I'll just get this out there now. I think I posted it on all three platforms, obviously. And I think I only saw about four comments that were negative saying he's too old or they don't want him back. And obviously on the flip side of that, there's probably about 500 positive ones. But I was still shocked to see them four. The guy is invaluable to us. He's Burnley through and through, in my opinion. I'm absolutely buzzing that Johan is back and that's official it's done it's dusted again i'm sure like i said earlier 100 of you watching this video will be more than aware of it um, but it is 100 official he is back and he will be a burnley football club player next season and now when he returned to the club he said yes i'm back i'm extremely happy this club means so much to me leaving the club in the situation it was in getting relegated was difficult i didn't want to leave I wanted to help us get back to the Premier League where we belong. I know my sorry, I knew my football career was definitely not over. He says, I've also spoken with the new manager and I just want to help this team get back to the Premier League. It's going to be hard. The championship is extremely difficult, but the talent we have in this squad, the experience we have in this squad, we can look at this season in a positive way. We know we've got to work hard. It's not enough to have talent in this league. You have to work hard every day, every game, and that's why I'm here to make sure that's what we're going to do. I am, like I said, I, I'm buzzing to see that Johan is back and he speaks very, very well there. Again, we all know Johan, we all know he can speak very well, but he says the right things about how we need to work hard and you know that he's one of them in that dressing room at the top of the hierarchy because of his experience, because of his time at the club. And it was a worry for me that he was leaving and especially when it looked like Jay would be leaving as well. We could have lost so much experience. Again, there might be two players that may not be able to play every single week in the championship. And when they do, they may not deliver every single game. But they are both more than capable of playing very well at this level. And I think they are both more than capable of getting us back into the Premier League with their contributions on the pitch. But I think their contributions off the pitch are just as important, especially in well, in both of their cases. Um, I'm buzzing to have them back. Now, I know some of you don't have social media. So I'm just going to repeat something that I did say on social media for those of you that don't have it, and I will put the tweet on, on, on screen as well. But it can't be a coincidence to me that as soon as VK leaves, I think that week, Jay signed a new deal, and obviously now Johan's come back as well. And obviously there was reports that Bellamy had been sacked by VK. Um, I say reports, people were talking about Bellamy being sacked by VK. A lot of people were talking about Bellamy leaving, but not really suggesting why. And as soon as VK goes to Bayern, it turns out Bellamy's staying as well. So that to me suggests that VK may well have had an issue with some of the players and staff. I think it's telling to me that these three are now staying at the club when it looked like they weren't after VK leaves. But again, I'm just playing devil's advocate. I'm just playing devil's advocate. But I think it's very telling. I think it's pretty obvious. Um, it's, it's good to see your hand back. And I will just say... I. <laughs> 
I, I, I'd heard some rumours that Johan was coming back, hence the posts on Twitter that I had put out about, you know, just asking the question if somebody would want him back. Um, and then I had to go to work. So I went to work, did a deal with somebody at work. So instead of doing the 12 hour shifts that I normally do, I only did the seven hour shift. Don't tell my boss. Um, but uh, I ended up going to, you know, the McDonald's at Rising Bridge. I don't know why I'm telling you all this on a new show, but it's relevant, I promise. I went to the McDonald's at Rising Bridge and I seen this big, massive, I can't remember what brand car it were, I think it were a Merc, coming towards me, going towards Starbucks. I'm like, that's a nice car. I looked in it, Dora Rocher, and sat next to him, Johan Berg Gubbinson. So I'm like, oh, the rumours are true then. So at that point, I knew it were happening, uh, hence why I put even more posts up about asking the question. But yeah, it's good to see Johan back. I'm buzzing to see Johan back. He will provide a lot of experience to this team and he's still more than capable on the pitch. So yeah, as I said earlier, that's two reasons there. The manager coming in and speaking very well and saying that he's well connected at the club and Bellamy and stuff like that and Johan coming back. Them two things, I don't know about you, but them two things give me a lot more optimism going into the season. Elsewhere, in terms of rumours and not official announcements like I've just been speaking about, it's actually been pretty quiet on that front, which is probably a good thing considering we had so many official announcements. Obviously, I don't want, I never really want this video to be too long. I always feel between eight minutes and 15 minutes is more than enough. So when there's a lot to cram in, I do sometimes get a little bit worried that it's not gonna be enough because I'm gonna have to do very short, sharp, you know, quick things with the news. I don't want it to get too long. So I'm kind of glad it was uh, pretty quiet on the rumours this weekend. But according to Alan Nixon, so I'll take it with a pinch of salt, Newcastle United are expected to still continue their pursuit of James Trafford. He says, Newcastle United are expected to make another move for James Trafford despite already signing two goalkeepers recently and already having a £16 million bid rejected by Burnley. Chelsea are also interested but need to move some players on before they can bid. Now, according to his article, um, he goes into more detail in the article. He says they will make a new move for Burnley despite already signing the two shot stoppers. The two did have a £16 million bid knocked back by the Clarets uh, and snapped up veteran John Ruddy on a free and a name who I'm not even going to try and attempt in a swap. However, Trafford is still seen as a future number one and the Geordies will try to go closer to the £30 million valuation to get him. Chelsea boss Enzo Maresca also wants Trafford, but his transfer team need to move out some of the existing keepers before their bid. Now, the main thing here for me is how we said that Newcastle will go closer to the 30 million. Look, I agree Trafford got a bit of an unfair, um, some unfair stick last season. He has blocked Turfcast on Instagram for some reason, and I'm, I'm still sticking up for him. Um, but I feel like he got un un some unnecessary stick last season. I feel like VK threw him in at the deep end when he shouldn't have done. And it was that was the reason why he got some stick off the fans, which I don't think he should. Booing, booing him and chanting Murich's name while he was playing was pretty disgusting. We, we, we're not that type of fan base. I don't think we should be behaving like that, in my personal opinion. But that's what happened. So... I do feel sorry for him. I, I feel sorry for him that he was thrown in at the deep end by the manager who who got everything wrong last season, I think it's fair to say, when he shouldn't have been. But maybe he came in and kicked up a fuss saying he wants to be number one. I guess we'll never know. But he doesn't seem like the type. And from what I've heard at the training ground, he is keen. He's keen to work hard. He's always working hard, whereas some of the other goalkeepers don't work as hard as he does on the training pitch. So maybe that's another reason my company was so adamant on starting him but if Newcastle come in and say 30 million quid I think every single Burnley fan will snap their hand off I still think he'll be a decent goalkeeper but he's going to need to bulk up he's going to need to get better at crosses he's not Premier League quality just yet that's one of the mistakes we made last season I do think it played a big hand in us getting relegated though I know a lot of people say that it didn't there was other factors there was obviously other factors the main one was the manager but I think the manager choosing Trafford for so long was a big factor in my opinion. However, 16 million quid is not enough when we paid around that much. Some of the reports suggest a little bit more, but the, the, the upfront fees were around that much reported level. If we can get 30 million for him and then hopefully potentially a sell on top of that as well, I'd buy Newcastle's hand off. I do think he'll be quite good in the championship, but I also do worry about him a little bit in terms of crosses. But I think he knows he's probably not strong enough in that area so he probably will be working on that you would think over his you know his time off or, or his training sessions and I do think he'll get better a year in the championship he may start 
getting bullied with crosses and stuff like that at first, but then he'll work on it and he'll get better because from what I've been told, like I said, he's very keen on the training ground and very keen to keep learning and keep working. So I think mentally he, he is he is on the training pitch quite a good goalkeeper and that's why I believe he will be very, very good. And like I said, I do feel sorry for him, even though for some reason he's blocked me on Instagram. I have no idea why. Um, but yeah, according to Alan Nixon... James Trafford is, uh, sorry, Newcastle United are still going to come back for James Trafford despite already signing two goalkeepers. And the bit about Chelsea, I've heard that myself as well recently from a source. Um, I, I wasn't aware that they needed to move people on though, but Chelsea are interested in, in, in him as well. And look, he, despite everything I've just said about, I still think he'll be a very good goalkeeper and potentially England's number one one day. I'm surprised that them sort of clubs are willing to spend 30 million quid on him. But hey, if they are, bite their hand off and then try and keep Mjoric, but obviously the reports are that Mjoric has asked to leave, so invest it in another very, very good goalkeeper for the Championship, and you can get a very good goalkeeper for the Championship for probably about five million, so uh, a lot of it you know, will hopefully be, be put into a, a, another goalkeeper and obviously other playing squad members as well, but I think we're going to see a lot of stuff about players leaving as well, your likes of your Trappers, your Mjoric's, I still think your Sanders and your Order Bears are going to go as well. Um, and potentially a few more. But yeah, obviously anything that I do see, I will let you know here on the Clarets uh, Daily News update. So yeah, that's it from me today. That's pretty much everything that's out there at the minute. We'll be back to doing it daily now, obviously Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Um, I'm not actually in work that much this week, so I should be able to do one every single day and pretty much on time for you all. But yeah, let me know in the comments what you think below, about, uh, below sorry, about Scott Parker, about Johan Berg Gubbinson and about the potential of James Trafford going to Newcastle despite them signing two new goalkeepers. I'll be honest, when I put the tweet out there, a Newcastle fan responded saying, absolutely no chance now we've bought them two keepers and the club have pretty much already hinted at that. So, like I said, always take nicks and stories with a pinch of salt. But yeah, thanks everybody for watching and please let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.